Good afternoon and welcome. Today's painting is going to be from Sevilla, Spain. I will put our reference photo up here in the right side of the screen uh, just so you can take a look. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, let's go ahead and get our palette wet just so that our colors can start to activate. Let's get our paper wet. All right. So the painting today is going to be pretty bright. A lot of our buildings are going to be in light. And so we're going to do a little bit more on this first wash than we, than we typically do. So we're going to have a nice kind of blue-ish sky. It's going to be a bright, sunny day. Let's put a little blue in there. Let's pull it across. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to continue to add a little pigment here. This is cobalt and cerulean blue. I'm just adding a little bit more pigment as I work down this sky. Now I'm going to be careful to cut around this building. It's going to be in light and so we're going to complete that or I guess get our first wash on the building while we're doing our sky here. So I want to be careful to uh, kind of paint around that. So I'm just adding a little bit more color here. And all these buildings on the right side are going to be in light as well. So I don't want to cut down into those. So let's just keep working our way down the page. All right. Just being careful here. Yeah. That looks nice. And since we are kind of getting lower, I'm going to continue to add pigment just so that this area has a little bit more color. When I say area, I guess the bottom part of our sky here has a little bit more pigment and color to it when compared to the top part of the sky. All right, that looks, that looks pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to grab our paper towel here. And I'm just going to kind of absorb these, these little bottom areas. And we're going to start to actually paint the buildings right off the bat here. Again, since they're going to be in light, we want to do them on the first wash. And they're very warm, so I'm pulling in some yellow ochre and burnt sienna. A little more yellow ochre. And we're just going to start at this, this roof line here. And I'm going to push up into the sky a little bit just because that sky, since it's already wet, is going to bleed down into the building. Now, I'm going to try to vary these a little bit in color, some warmer than others. I'm going to leave some specks of uh, gaps here to help kind of represent windows once we get to that portion. Anytime you've got a building in light, you want to try to suggest its features without using dark paint as much as possible. It helps maintain that kind of luminosity to it. All right, let's do the same thing down here. Again, I'm leaving little, little gaps there for windows. I'm gonna absorb that again, just to keep our sky from bleeding too much into our buildings. There we go. And I've got some uh, I guess little awnings coming out here, so I'm going to grab some. I've got like some lemon yellow over there. And I'm going to just pull that along right there. Yeah. And we're going to cut those out later. And that looks pretty good so far. I'm going to creep over to this side. And you'll notice I'm going to let that building, dr or this, I should say, the sky around the building that tower sticking up into the sky dry a little bit more. If I do it right away, it'll bleed too much. And while we do want some bleeding, um, you know, we, we always want to kind of strive to have that misty effect. Since it is a very prominent feature, I, I don't want it to I don't want it to lose its shape too too much. And right now I'm just dipping into warm colors. Um, this this side over here is gonna be cast in some shadow, so I'm not not super concerned about it. Just trying to get everything kind of filled in. 
And let's go ahead, I'm going to spray this just to keep it alive. And let's go ahead and work up into that building. Now, this is a little too red and warm for my liking. I'm going to cool it down just slightly. But let's just pull right into that. Yep. That looks good. And then the top of the building is a little cooler. I'm just going to pull some blue. Let's see how this ends up looking. That's going to bleed a little bit into the sky. That's okay. It's bleeding a little bit more than I'd like. Let's see. I've got to make a decision here. Do I want to fuss with it or leave it alone? I'm going to tap it just a little bit. I think that'll be good. I think that building, I, I don't... It's a little bit blue for me, but it is our first wash, so this is going to dry lighter. But I, I don't want to go up there and start adding color in because all of this is going to be in light. We want it to be really, really bright. And so every time we go in and start adding paints to it, we risk getting rid of some of that, that luminous effect. So I'm going to leave it alone and make the decision just to let it be. And I'm working down here, and I'm keeping this really warm. We're going to cool it off a little bit as we get towards the bottom here just to give the effect of uh, the bottom of this foreground being closer to the viewer. That may be a little too cool. Warm it up just a little bit. Just darkening things up, and we'll pull that across. Oops, push that onto my paper. All right, let's do a really nice dark stripe at the bottom. Yeah, there we go. That looks nice. Now, while this is still wet, I'm going to add a couple little details around our windows here. I'm going to just add what could be some it's lavender I'm pulling out of there. It could be some lavender shutters, blinds. Just a little something while this is still wet. I really want to be careful since, again, this isn't light. Put some green in there. That's okay. I think that's about all I want to do. Maybe just a couple little dots. Let those bleed out. I think we'll leave it right like that. As I look over here, I am just going to touch this area just a little bit. Right like that. Okay. I think our first wash is done. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit at the bottom. I think our first wash is done. Ah, you don't want that green. It's a little strong on there. Maybe it'll add some interest later on. Ah, we'll see. Okay. First wash is done. We're going to let this completely dry and then we're going to move into the rest of the painting. This is going to be in direct light. These buildings are going to be in direct light as well. This is going to be in shadow and I think we're going to have a, a shadow kind of cutting across here, reaching over to this light building. We've got a couple of awnings. We'll make sure to cut those out and have some dark here. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens. So be right back. All right, we're back. Our paper is completely dry, and we're going to go ahead and get started on this tower over here. Now, the right side of it is just going to be barely visible. The rest is going to be in the, in the sun. So I'm going to work this side of this shadow here, and then I think we're going to just start working into this dark building. So what I'm going to do for the top, being as it is cooler than the rest, I'm going to mix a cool-ish color, and we're just going to... Take a look here and see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see here. Yeah, we'll have to see. Sometimes it's hard to tell when you first start a, a shadow if you've matched the tone properly or not. We're going to warm it up. And we're going to work down this side here. 
right something like that and it looks very dark but again as we get into the rest of this it will dry lighter and we do want it to be somewhat dark I'm going to work a little some tower antennas over here could also be a part of that building oh and you know what I'm going to spray this just a little bit all right now let's continue so let's warm this up neutralize it and let's just start working into our shadows here now that is not going to be dark enough so we definitely need to darken that up a little bit yep. Let's see here. Also, this half of the building is going to be in sun as well. Or I should say this, this kind of corner here. Yeah, and I'm just kind of moving my brush quickly. I want to I want to be able to maintain some light and also get a little bit of an abstract feel what's going on in here. There's probably going to be shadows on the side of that. I don't know what that is. I can draw a roof line shadow or something there. I really just want to, while this is a large dark shape, and you want to think of shapes, or think in shapes as you're painting, I, I do want to kind of, I guess, break it up a little bit. Just so, oops, I'm blotting some dark spots in our sky just to kind of get rid of so much of the uniformity of the shape I always want to have just a little bit of this and that going on all right let's kind of work over there just warming things up okay now let's see I'm going to do the, this kind of foreground shadow would kind of cut across something like that. I think that's as much as I'm going to be able to do moving into that area. Maybe just a little bit of a darker line up here. And you know what? Ah, the shadow is so strong on this building. I'm just going to soften it up just a little bit because this is in the distance. So I, I do want it to have a, just a little bit of a softer feel. All right, and maybe pull through there just to kind of break it up a little bit. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now, well, I said we're good there, but one last thing. I do want to just, I really want to pull that shadow across there. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Okay. Now, that side of the building is going to be done for now. We are going to come back and touch up windows and add more and more details. But let's take a look over on this side. I'm going to use some similar color or a similar tone here. That's a little too cool. And I'm going to add some roof, some roof shadows here of these, these roof lines. And I'm just going to try to mark them kind of quickly. Then I'm going to come back and pick up some darker pigment just to do this little roof line here. You know, there's always going to be that little overhang on the roof that's a little bit darker than everything else. And that's still really not quite dark enough. Yeah, there we go. Just add some little, again, little antennas and chimneys and things. You always want to try to, again, just break your shapes up just a little bit. All right. I'm going to give this a spray. Keep everything nice and wet. And now, all right, we're going to add a little bit of windows here. I want to be really careful with this. Whenever you have a building in the sun, or I should say in direct light, you want to keep your windows pretty thin. And a lot of times, 
Less is going to be more. You do not want to overdo things. Okay. That looks okay. Add just a couple little lines down the block there. And let's do one there. Something like that. And I think like that is about all we want to do in terms of uh, suggesting buildings, or excuse me, suggesting windows on that building. I'm going to give this a spray again, keeping everything alive and wet. And while our other side, where we did our shadow, is still wet, I'm going to come back with some darker paint and add a roof line there. Same principle applies where, again, it'll be a little darker towards the top of our roof. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Well, we've got this pigment out. Let's work on the windows on this building. I want to keep these a tad bit lighter. This building is further away, and so I, I don't want it to attract quite as much attention as our building over here. So I'm going to try to keep them a little lighter. That can be tough. All right, that looks okay. I'm gonna come in here and just blot out just a little bit there because it, it, it was a little too dark. I'm gonna draw a shadow here for our roof line. Okay, that looks all right. I'm okay with that. Now, something I do wanna do is we've got this shadow here and as things get deeper into the background, they need to lighten up a little bit. So I'm going to just pat that shadow just a little bit there. That looks better. Okay. Now, I'm going to pick up some pure pigment, and we're going to do the suggestion of some, some windows here in the shadow. And I like to do that while this is still wet, so we can get a little bit of that kind of bleeding effect. Yeah, that looks okay. And while we've got this, we would definitely have a, a window or two over here as well. Just pull that down, give it a little dry brush. Maybe draw some lines on the bottom there. That looks pretty good. Okay, this is starting to come together a little bit. All right, spray it again. Again, just keeping everything nice and wet. Now, we've got these these awnings here jutting out, and I want to I want to cut those out. So I'm gonna get some pigment again to help us do our shadows. And let's start to work those work those out here. Now I want to leave some gaps of light underneath there for know boxes and things but this definitely would kind of cut over there something like that I'll do the same thing on this side again just trying to kind of keep it a little bit abstract I don't want to get too caught up in drawing these perfect little you know shadows maybe pull some things coming out of there <coughs> Okay, that looks that looks okay. Maybe I'm gonna take my palette knife here and while some of this is wet, scratch a couple of highlights here and there. Yeah, that looks I think that looks better. Okay, we've got our shadows there. I'm gonna give it another spray. Keeping everything nice and wet. And I'm squinting kind of the whole time to try and get an idea. I'm trying to remove a lot of the detail and just, just feel our tones here. I am going to darken up the tops of the windows on this just a little bit. Something like that. I think that looks better. Okay. Let's add. Now I'm just working in some detail over here. You know what? we would also have a roof line here. I kind of skipped that. 
Let's just pull that over. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It's probably a little dark, but that's okay. I'm gonna just pick up this darker pigment and just add a couple of things here and there. This is a little bit too dark, the shadows here. I, I think I cooled that tone down a little bit too much. And so, again, this is why we keep it wet, so I can come in here and work things. I'm going to grab that paper towel and just, just touch it up a little bit. I think the temperature is a little wrong. I wish it was a little warmer, but I think I can get away with just dabbing it because of the warmth in the building behind it should help bring that back up. All right, that doesn't look too bad. Let's see, what else do I want to add over here? Again, just kind of just working around, trying to find that fine line of, of detail and being careful not to overdo things. I, I'm pretty pleased with this these windows here. I don't want to come back in and really do much. I am going to make sure, though, that we have a, I want a better line around that little gazebo awning. I'm just going to just making sure to add our little chimneys and things. Yeah. A couple little lines here and there. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take my palette knife and maybe draw a little roof line. Yep. Okay, this is looking pretty good. Uh, I'm pleased so far. The next thing we're going to do are going to be our figures and our, our foreground shadows here, or our, I should say our, our kind of main subject shadows. I think what I want to do is I'm going to let this dry, and you know what else I'm going to do? I don't like how dark these windows are. I'm going to pull down some. I think that looks better to me. I like that look. Okay. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back in and start working in our figures and then kind of final up with some more details. So I'll uh, be back in just a second. We're going to let this dry. All right, we're back. So let's get started with our main figures here. I'm going to start with these two over here and you can maybe just see the outline of the, the pencil I had in there. And I'm going to grab some fairly dark and strong pigment because they they are in the shadows and let's just start to build something up here and I'm also while I have this on here I'm you're gonna see me a lot just dabbing around back here because I'm gonna add more figures and some abstract shapes as well just to fill everything in I'm a big proponent of abstracting in a lot of the details in your background. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna light just to draw some faces on these folks. A little bit of darker paint. We're going to work on the bottoms of them. Got our legs coming out here. Yep. I'll do the same thing here. And they're pretty dark in shadow right now, but once I once I highlight them with a little bit of gouache, it will really pop out and come alive there. All right, let's move on. Let's do this guy up here. I'm going to grab some, some lavender and kind of mix it in a little bit as we get on the darker side, just to, I don't know, I guess give the illusion of a little bit of shadow. I should have finished this area, though. Yep. There we go. And it may be just a tad wet over there, but that's okay. Might just help us add a little bit of interest to our, our painting here. And I'm just, just brushing in a little bit of the legs. I find that if you draw the legs or too much of the legs, it kind of makes them look like stick figures. But if you just suggest the lines a little bit. I don't know. It adds a little movement to it. Now, I don't really like... I may have overdone that. I tried to smudge some things out and it didn't quite work out, but that's okay. 
we're going to let him dry. We're going to come back and work on that a little bit. And I'm going to, again, while I've got this paint on here, on my brush, I'm going to add some, some detail. Could be some, some umbrellas back here. Could be all kinds of things. Maybe some more little windows. Add a little hair, perhaps, on there. All right. Now I've also got some people over here talking on this, underneath this awning. And again, I'm just, just want to suggest that they're there. I don't need to create a masterpiece here. We're just, just suggesting life in our photo, or in our painting, excuse me. All right, so let's, again, while I've got this dark pigment, I'm going to continue to add little, little bits of detail, just some vertical lines. It really doesn't take much. And I'm going to put one here, just because it's so bright here. It'll be a nice contrast. Maybe some more little lines there. I may have overdid that just a little bit. All right, now this guy here needs to be stronger. I'm going to add a jacket on him just so I can use some darker pigment to really have him come forward in the painting. Again, I'm just trying to suggest those legs a little bit. All right, let's do a little shadow work here. This should be pretty similar to the tone we were using. But I'm just going to just pull some lines to the side there. Not a whole lot. Yep, something like that. That does not look too bad. I think this gentleman here, the portions are a little off. His, I think his head is too big. I'm going to try to fix him. Let's see. I might just turn him into two people. If I can't get this figured out, let's do that. All right, let's try here. That's much better. Okay, that is much, much better. All right, let's do some finishing type touches here. I'm just trying to look into the shadows here and just add just a little bit of, just a little bit of something. I think we could have a couple more figures. I'm just gonna pull some pigment here and draw one there and maybe one there. And again, keeping it very loose keeping it abstract. This individual's huh, looks like he's dancing or something. Just walking along out there. This body got too long, so we're going to mark that out. I'll just pull down uh, some legs. Okay, we're looking pretty good here. I do wish this figure was a little bit lighter in the body, just because he's really our only one that's out of the shadow. I'm going to pull that down just a little bit. Just take that. We'll sharpen his face back up. Okay. We're getting pretty close here. Try my best to not, not overdo things. Hmm. All right. As I look at this, I think we're we're getting close to adding in our gouache highlights here. Something I am going to do, though, I want to pretend there's another building to our left here, something that we can't see. I want to add a shadow across the front of this foreground. Sometimes when you add a shadow down here at the bottom, it just kind of helps box in your figures and your subject a little bit, but maybe this 
There's another building just out of frame. We can't see. I'm just darkening it up just a little bit there. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm going to just lengthen that just a little bit. I think that looks good. Okay. All right, I'm going to let this dry, and then we're going to add our gouache highlights, and I think we'll be pretty close to being done. All right, I've got some gouache here. I've got my little brush, and we are going to finish this up. So, I've talked about this in previous videos. You don't want to overdo these highlights, but sometimes it can be hard not to. Let's see here. Just, just on the tops of the shoulders. Indicate these individuals in the shadows over here. And just one on his head. And gouache is always most effective when your background is dark and then you have a figure in front of it that is also dark. That's how you get the most contrast. I should have put a little bit thicker on this side of his shoulder. And then back here, we're just going to kind of suggest things. I'm not going to get too literal. Let me draw a vertical pole there. Um, let's see here. Maybe something there. Yeah. I think that's about, I think that's about it. Maybe one more line there. I think that's going to be about it. Let's take a look here. I'm going to rinse that brush off and sign the bottom. Always the fun part. And then we'll kind of review and go over what we did well, what we didn't do well, what we can work on for next time. So, let's see. All right. And I'll give him a tie, and then I'll draw a circle here in the background. It could be a sign or something. Yeah. All right. So things I like, things I don't like. Um, for me, I always have trouble getting the tones correct in scenes where there's a lot of sunlight. And I'm not sure these are quite accurate enough. I definitely need to, I definitely need to work on that. It's a weakness of mine. I think the individuals here on the left, these two guys, um, they are technically in sunlight, but they're almost the darkest figures in the whole scene. I think that I should have created their bodies um, by negatively, negatively painting around and leading, leaving white here in their torsos. But overall, it's not, it's not too bad. I messed up a little bit here on the legs. Those are a little bit, a little wonky, but that's okay. Um, yeah, overall, it's a, it's an okay painting, but uh, definitely something I need to work on. So anyways, I hope you learned something, and if you made it all the way to the end, I appreciate it. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. It just helps me get this out to more people. So uh, yeah, keep on painting.